Welcome to another Alluvian Gaming Game Review. Today we fight for the species in... Prey. Prey is an atmospheric, survival horror first-person shooter set on a space station orbiting Earth. It's developed by Arcane Studios, known for the Dishonored series, and published by Bethesda. Prey is actually a reboot of a 2006 game with the same title, but developed by a completely different studio. It shares nothing with its predecessor besides the base premise. Prey actually feels a lot like a Bioshock game, which makes sense since Arcane actually did some work on Bioshock 2. Prey just might be more of a spiritual successor to System Shock than the original Prey. Avoiding spoilers as best as I can, you play as Morgan Yu, an employee of the Transtar Corporation. You quickly find yourself aboard Talos-1, Transtar's research base in orbit focused on experimenting on an alien race known as the Typhon. To what end isn't immediately known, and Prey does a fantastic job of telling an intriguing story. The narrative is loaded with twists and turns, and how much of it you uncover is up to you. You can find notes and audio logs from Talos 1's inhabitants that cover everything from arranging a D&D night in the rec center, to a contraband smuggling ring, or a scientist questioning the ethicality of their work. The narrative, matched with the thoroughly realized environments, create a game that absolutely oozes atmosphere. Arcane did a fantastic job utilizing the 3D space to provide multiple paths through the environments. Prey's different areas are brilliantly laid out and functional, down to small details that really make them believable. Areas feel lived in while maintaining the corporate industrial aesthetic. The ambient sounds, the synth music, and just overall sound design do a great job of filling you with dread and uneasiness. Nothing better exemplifies this than the tense EVA sections outside the station, when you're alone in the black. Prey is a first-person shooter, but this isn't a run-and-gun blaze of glory shooting gallery, at least it doesn't have to be. And it makes that pretty clear from the beginning, as once things go sideways, you're extremely outgunned and ill-equipped to handle the Typhon threat. But Prey emphasizes making choices and strategy above all else, more often using brains over brawn. You choose how to play the game, what skills to take, and how to tackle the obstacles put in front of you. When you come across a locked door, do you go looking for the keycard, attempt to hack it, or maybe look for a way around through a hidden maintenance hatch? All can be viable strategies. Enemies come in all shapes and sizes, each with their own unique abilities that pose different challenges to overcome, such as the Mimic's ability to take the shape of inanimate objects, making it hard to trust anything in your surroundings. Every situation has many different possible solutions. It's up to you to decide how to proceed. Sometimes, finding another way around may be preferable to direct confrontation. As you encounter more of the Typhon, you gain the ability to add their powers to your own personal arsenal, further expanding the possibilities. You gain skills and abilities through an RPG-style skill tree system, but you don't earn skill points. You instead use Neuromods to give yourself the desired traits. Neuromods can be found all over the station, encouraging exploration, but they can also be crafted. But because of this method of gaining strength, the game's difficulty can start to feel a bit lopsided. At the beginning, you feel extremely weak and limited, which makes sense, but as you progress and gain more skills, you reach a point where the enemies become mostly trivial, which hurts the game overall. Once you're no longer worried about what's around the next corner, the tension is lost. Prey suffers from a few more issues as well. Sometimes effects like fire coming out of a hole in a pipe won't line up to its source, making it painful to avoid or repair with the glue gun. Some of the quest objectives don't track correctly, making completion difficult, if not impossible. One quest specifically would not trigger an event that was supposed to happen. I wasted a lot of time trying to get it to work until I looked online to find it was a common bug. Also, when you're around other live people, they tend to talk over one another and make it frustrating to try to listen to any of them. But really, the biggest problem for me are the load times. While playing on a PS4 Pro, the load times are pretty lengthy, which isn't that big of a deal if this were a level or mission-based game. But Talos 1 is designed with a hub-like lobby that other departments branch off of, some even further branching off of those. And between every single department is a loading screen that can last a couple of minutes. It's less noticeable early on, as you spend more time in individual departments. But later on in the game, once you're more familiar with the areas and you've become more powerful, you'll have to do a lot of backtracking, and you'll move through sections extremely fast only to be halted by the constant loading. The occasional time sequence will get your adrenaline pumping, only to just stop you dead in your tracks at another loading screen, ruining the moment. Ultimately, Prey is a good game with a great story and atmosphere, but it's not without some flaws. Luckily, those flaws aren't game-breaking and don't majorly detract from the overall experience. I give Prey an 8 out of 10. If you're a fan of the Shock series of games, you'll no doubt have a lot of fun with Prey. I'm looking forward to the recently released DLC Moon Crash. Expect a review on that in an upcoming video. But until then, watch out for Mimics.